What do these animals have in common? They're all ambassadors for the Adobe Mountain Wildlife Center. The Arizona Game and Fish Department opened the doors to Adobe Mountain Wildlife Center in 1983 on a little over an acre of land, making it the first wildlife agency in the nation to include a rehabilitation program as part of its management. Contact between humans and wildlife grows daily as humans expand into or destroy wildlife habitat. In most cases, when humans and wildlife collide, wildlife suffers. Wildlife rehabilitation gives these wild animals a second chance to live free in their natural habitat. The goal of wildlife rehabilitation is to provide professional care to sick, injured, and orphaned wild animals so ultimately they can be returned to their natural habitat. The mission for the Wildlife Center is actually a two-fold project. Number one, our goal is to take in sick, injured, or orphan wildlife that are native to Arizona. And if it is an animal that we can rehabilitate and put back into the wild, that is our number one goal. If the animal is injured in such a way that it cannot be released, then we will sometimes be able to rehabilitate it to the point where it will be an animal that can be used in education outreach Sometimes it's an animal that can be placed at a facility such as a wildlife education park, possibly a zoo that has a special wildlife program tied into southwestern exhibits, things like that. The Adobe Mountain Wildlife Center cares for more than a thousand sick and injured native wildlife and provides wildlife education programs to hundreds of thousands of people annually. Also, the center holds an open house one weekend every year where the public is invited to take a close-up look at their work and to learn about the center's two primary goals. Our second goal is to do education outreach, and that is, again is with a lot of animals that we get in that are non-releasable, that are also tolerable to be around public that, that tend to work to not be trained like you would your dog or your cat, but in such a way that, that they do well sitting on a perch or in a special setting with a pin or something like that, so that they are an animal that the public can see and the public can see up close and personal and enjoy. Not to touch or, or to feel or squeeze or hug, but an animal that they can get a wonderful picture of. They're mesmerized by seeing these animals and they start asking questions and that gives us the open door to start explaining about the wonderful wildlife we have in Arizona and the uniqueness of every single one of the animals that are here. There's something special about every animal here. And speaking of special, meet Joe Max. Visitors will learn that the kestrel is Arizona's smallest falcon and one of the prettiest. Those colorful feathers are one way he makes his presence known to the ladies. This is an American kestrel. He's been shot with a BB in the elbow portion of his wing, and it doesn't fold correctly, so now he can't fly with the ability to hunt, thereby he can't eat, so he's here. They're protected birds. You'll see them once you get to know what you're looking at. I thought they were all doves flying. You know, never knew what birds were. You know, okay, that's a dove. Then I got close and you start, well, let's look for the little brown birds now. Oh, there's one, there's one. And they're around a lot in the fields that you'll see them sitting on fence posts, similar to this. You see them on top telephone poles and they'll sit there for hours and they'll just watch. They find something they want, they'll swoop, grab it, dinner. From one of our smallest raptors to one of the largest, Jerry Ostwinkle introduces Cody to the crowd. This is a two-year-old male bald eagle. Uh, this bird, Mike Demlong and I went to Wyoming and picked him up. He was an uh, uh, imprint that had gone into a picnic area and started stealing people's food, obviously taken out of the nest. So we heard about him. We needed an educational eagle that, was, that we could properly train without stress 
And so we went up to Wyoming and we picked them up. The eagles that belong to Game and Fish actually stay at my residence because these eagles are flown. And uh, the reason that they're being flown is for exercise, for mental stability. These birds, especially the bald eagle, uh, they just can't be sitting in a cage constantly, constantly. Uh, falconers fly their birds. The golden eagle actually hunts for jackrabbits, pursues jackrabbits, and this is a, a system that we use to keep the bird calm, to keep it uh, just able to function so it doesn't go stale. Eagles are a different, uh, different bird altogether, so they're very intelligent, uh, they need the attention, it, they can't be stale, they need to, uh, they need to work. And not to be outdone, Magnum is on hand. This is, uh, this is Magnum. He's a 10-year-old male, golden eagle. Uh, he was struck by a car in, uh, over by Flagstaff about 10 years ago. Uh, ended up losing vision in this eye, but it, it doesn't affect him on flying. He's, he's got full flight. Uh, Magnum started uh, a falconry program four years ago of flying. This bird's able to pursue and catch game uh, now, so he's, uh, he's come a long way in uh, 10 years. Just so you don't get the idea that birds are the only ambassadors at Adobe Mountain, meet Hunter. Hunter was abandoned as a kitten. He was the sole survivor of three, and he has been with Adobe Mountain Wildlife Center since the age of about four and a half months. I've been working with him, been his lead trainer since then, and in the last couple of years, we've actually been able to take him out on education programs and teach people a little bit about Arizona's native bobcat. Because he was found at such a young age, at, at about two and a half weeks, he was too young to survive on his own, so he had to be cared for. In that time frame, he became um, imprinted, which means he's not able to go back into the wild and fend for himself. This is not his natural surrounding. He'd much rather um, be up in a tree. As you can see, his jumping ability from a standstill is easily six feet. He can do eight feet, and if he's got something to propel himself with, he can also go up to 10 feet. He's about half the size of a mountain lion. Mountain lion's body from tip of their nose to the tip of their tail is about six feet long. A bobcat average is about three. Their average weight is anywhere from 20 to 30 pounds. Hunter weighs about 23 pounds right now. That harness and leash are there for protection protection for Hunter as well as for the public he comes in contact with. You don't normally see a bobcat with a harness and a leash and this is not um, anything at all that we recommend. They're not friendly animals but at the same time they're not animals that are going to attack you unless something is wrong. Then it's time to check out the other activities at the open house. Let's make a beeline to the kids corner and when we say kids, kids at heart are also welcome. Everything we do with the Kids Corner is to tie back into something to do with wildlife. And it's an interactive opportunity for them to have fun and do something that kids really like to do. The Kids Corner has a lot of activities. You can make a fox face, you can make an owl face, you can make a rattlesnake, you can make all kinds of activities. The rattlesnake is basically strips of, of construction paper that you glue together. Once you have made your paper chain snake, then you can move it along the ground and learn how that they sliver along and how they move and kind of get the concept. So it's an interactive opportunity to where this child will then take this activity away and show it to others. Other favorite activities are fishing demonstrations, tossing a PFD, otherwise known as a personal flotation device from a boat, oh, so close and checking out the informational displays from some wildlife partners. And before leaving for the day, who can resist the chance to pick up some really cool Christmas gifts? In an increasingly urbanized world, people are less likely to have personal knowledge of and experience with nature and wildlife. Reducing human-wildlife conflicts can help both humans and wildlife. That's where Adobe Mountain Wildlife Center shines.